Satnam, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to the Sovereign Sisterhood Movement Podcast, a global initiative dedicated to healing our lineages by helping women like you holistically heal and break free from generational patterns of emotional pain and trauma. Join us for this week's incredible guest, Laura Ordeal, who comes to us with a lot of experience, especially as it relates to gener- or healing in general, holistic healing hypnotherapy. When I was reading her bio, I got super excited to talk to her because one of the things she works with people is around mindset through hypnotherapy. She also is a professional astrologer, astrologer, and we all know in this community how important astrology also is, and she's very intuitive. So as we explore her work today, I want us to really keep an open mind and open heart to understand how important it is, like Laura says, to deal with the subconscious mind, to understand how it works, and to be able to do this to accomplish things that are in a much simpler manner, less stress, and more and more vitality and joy. So welcome, Laura. Thank you so much for being here. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to have the conversation. Yes, when I was reading your bio, I got super excited because I know that a lot of the training that you work with includes PTSD, CPTSD, Uh, IBS, panic and anxiety attacks. So before we get into uh, learning a little bit more about you and how you were led to this work, what exactly does your work encompass? Oh, goodness. Um, Well, the the hypnosis that I do actually encompasses going in to make the changes that you want to make, to clear the things out of the way that you no longer want there. And I really try to do it in a, in a way that's easy, complete, and And that just goes in and does it quickly for you because a lot of people don't want things to take years and years to change. They, they need the change to happen. Now they're done with the things that have not worked. And oftentimes I'm in the last ditch effort that people come to. I'm trying to get it to where I'm the first person maybe that they come (laughs) chat with, but, uh, but the work goes in and it changes. It's almost like a, a reboot of a hard drive. You know, uh, our brain is a bit like hard drive. And so when I, the work that I do goes in and just like all of those lines of, of um, things that are in your hard drive, I go in and we delete the things that are, that are no longer serving you, that are not working, that may even be hindering you. And then maybe sometimes we add in some things to speed things up, to amplify other things. So it's not always just about taking things out. It can be about adding in confidence, clarity, motivation, things like that to, to really help you along your way. So that's, that's the work. That's amazing. And yeah, the replacement has to happen. Otherwise, you know, what's left is just the void and this feeling of even feeling sometimes even more loss. Do you think that a lot of the people that come to you are are very self-aware where they know where their blockages are? Or do you like, because a lot, what you mentioned is that they spend probably a lot of time trying to heal and nothing happens or nothing changes. Do you feel like people have to be super self-aware to actually do this type of work? Or do you feel that even if someone who has never done any type of healing work can really grasp the concept of the approach you're taking? Uh, No, I don't think they have to be totally self-aware. Oftentimes, I think sometimes people think they do know what the block is or what the issue is. And oftentimes, it's a little bit deeper than that. It's something they never would have expected. Because it could be something from when you were a year old that for that little tiny one-year-old was an anchor, a bit of a trauma that anchored into you, which set up that coding I was talking about for the way that you were going to handle things in the future. And so unbeknownst to you, that's what you've been dealing with for so long. And along the way, things can get added in, more anchors, more hooks, whatever you want to call them, you know, they that pile up on us. And sometimes there can be a breaking point, you know, and that's when you're just not making the progress or the IBS shows up or the migraines are there. And oftentimes it goes back to that one thing when you were one year old, but you're not probably not going to remember that. So you don't know where to go look for it, but your subconscious does. Your mind knows everything about you. And so it knows exactly where to go to go. "Hmm, That's the root right there. We're going to clear that out. And then from there, all the stuff that came from that route 
are gone. It's not just about clipping off all the little things, the little issues here and there to say, ooh, okay, let's adjust your eating so that you're not overeating or undereating. Or uh, let's take away the anxiety. Or let's clear the IBS. It's not the one thing. We're going all the way back to get to the root of it and say, we want to clear everything. Let's take care of this all and do that. And that's what I love to do. Yeah, I think, and it's so important that you speak on that because I think a lot of people, it's like you kind of have to give yourself permission to heal. And a lot of people will have the headaches, like you said, or they have the physical symptoms, but they can't correlate it with something that has happened to them in their childhood or maybe something that even has been passed down generationally. So when you talk about IBS and anxiety and all these different things, how would you explain to someone that has had no healing modalities and never had really has been on this journey? How is that correlated to the subconscious mind? How do you see the subconscious mind and what role does it actually play in the healing journey for an individual? So I'll explain it a, a, a little bit, a couple of one easy way for people to really understand a little bit about it is often correlate it to having a puppy. You know, you have this puppy and it comes up and it, it wants attention and it wants attention, which is the issue that it's that's got going on, you know, this trauma or this difficulty or whatever it is. And it wants attention, wants attention. If you don't give it attention, that little puppy goes and and pees on your carpet and chews your shoes and does all these things that you don't want it to do. Headaches, digestive issues, pain in your body, often chronic that comes up, emotional bursts out of wherever, anxiety or anger or something like that, it wants attention. And so, and our subconscious mind is, is the driver. It's in the driver's seat. And so it can do that. And what you need to remember is that it, it might be a version of you. We have all these little versions. It's so fun because let's say that one, that little one-year-old has that moment. Maybe it's the parents arguing. And all of a sudden it's like, oh no, you know, something's happening. It's bad. We don't know what to do. There's a part of you, your subconscious creates a part of you that comes out and goes, I've got you a little armored version of you, you know, to protect you, keep you safe. And so great. Then you can move on. Maybe you're seven years old. You're in school. You get bullied. Another little version of you comes out. I've got you going to protect you you move on. That's what happens throughout life. Have you seen the little dolls that go one inside the other? That's a lot of what we are. We have these little versions of ourselves that have moments kind of anchored in. Some we remember or think about, some we do not. But what happens is oftentimes those versions of ourselves can get left behind, stuck in that loop of difficulty, some version of difficulty. And what happens is two things I've seen happen most of the time. One, you have something that's created that you deal with all your life. Anxiety, digestive issues, whatever. Oh, I've had anxiety all my life. You know, that's, that's okay. Or you have something out of the blue, which is often where people will come up with like PTSD, CPTSD, because to them it's out of the blue. Something happens and all of a sudden they're having these issues. And it's a little bit like that's the the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, you know, you know that saying. So that one thing, whatever it was, and it might not even be something you're aware of, triggered something for one of these versions of you back here. Now, what if you think about all these little versions in our subconscious? Our subconscious is the driver. Now, I don't know if you have children, but you've been a child and <laughs> you've, you've been a teenager. How difficult can teenagers be? They can be extremely difficult. And if they want something and they're not getting it, they can get kind of vicious. They can get kind of mean. What if that's the driver going on right now? What if the 14-year-old the, the version of you is the one that's like, all right, we're going to make your life miserable until we take care of this issue because this is not okay anymore. Oh my goodness. That's where I hear about people all the time. I don't know what happened. These sudden anger outbursts started coming into play. They weren't like that, you know, or I wasn't like that two years ago. I don't know what happened, but this is happening. Or all of a sudden, I, I'm so depressed, or I 
my 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 body's totally out of whack. I can't get it into play. I don't know what's going on. That's often that little straw that broke the camel's back, where it just kind of comes out of the blue. And both of those are connected back to these versions of ourselves. And what I do is I go in and I facilitate the conversation. Sometimes you're aware of it. Sometimes you're not. But your mind knows. And when you're willing to go in and say, all right, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to have the conversation. And you go and do that with your subconscious mind and say, let's clear these things out and let's find a better way. Let's let's find an easier way forward. Let's clear everything so that your subconscious mind knows, oh, oh, okay, that's not the way you want to do it anymore <laughs> because it's just been going along with the programming. Yes. That programming that's been in place. It's not judging whether it feels okay or not okay. It's like, this is how we do it. You know, it's like a, the bus driver on the route. We go the same route all the time. When you say, hey, let's hang a left because you want change in your life, the bus driver's like, so I, this is the way I know. So you have to kind of reprogram the GPS for the bus driver and say, it's okay. We can go this way safely. Let's go that way. And then things are going to open up. I don't know if you've ever experienced where you've tried to make changes in your life. And and all of a sudden something happens. You're like, yes, I want to make the change. I want to go. And it just stops you in your in your progress right there and you're like you know what's happening what, what or you have this fear and this panic that comes on and it's like oh i need to backpack i don't know about this i don't think this is the right thing that's your subconscious going um this isn't the way we normally go we probably need to stop this process wow. and that's what happens and that's why so many people get blocked in their progress and they're not able to move forward in ways because the mind is really trying to take care of you, protect you. But we need to make it clear, this is a safe way to go. This is okay. Rational, irrational, doesn't matter. Often I, I talk to people about pool sharks. I'm from the Jaws era. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I literally was afraid of there being sharks in pools. When I was a kid, you know, and I had been 12, 13, I pretty much kind of had somewhat of a rational ability to know that there were no sharks in the pool, but my body and my imagination and everything created the total possibility of sharks in the pool. And so it was horrible, it felt horrible, panic, fear, all of that. So that's a real feeling regardless of what's happening out here. Yeah. Oh and that's important. Those are beautiful analogies. I think a lot of people, you know, they they're they don't know what they don't know. And a lot of that really prohibits them from the healing journey because to them, having constant anxiety, having constant problems with their body is just the normal. And yeah. and it's so important to understand that not only is that normal, but there is help to actually assist you. Now you mentioned that that Jaws. That's such a, a visual because I totally agree with you. And uh, I'm an '80s baby, but I I totally resonate with that because people were so afraid to go into the beach. So how much of the programming that you're talking about in the subconscious mind do you believe is society versus childhood versus do you even believe in generational programming that gets passed Absolutely. down? So tell us a little bit more about that. I absolutely believe in that. And I think there's more and more and more science that's coming through to back that up about the generational stuff and things being a part of us and, and the emotions and, and the, I don't know, how would you say it? The moving into some of the same things that have come down the generational line. And actually, I love some of the, some of the work that I do in neuro-linguistic programming, which is a part of hypnosis, but it's just a little bit different. I've actually done some ancestral clearing and, you know, going back in the ancestral line and doing those clearings because sometimes there are things there that I think come forward. I do past life work as well, which I think can come into play, which is super fascinating because whether you believe it or not, Here's the important part. Your subconscious will work with it. Your mind will work it out because it knows what you're wanting and what, what you're wanting to do. And it will give you the stories, ideas, all of that information so that you can work it out. 
so that you can go, oh, okay, I got it. You know, in, in the awareness or not, when that clicks for you, everything changes and you go forward. But I think that that through the ancestral line, things and emotions are carried. They've actually, I was just reading this or hearing about, I can't remember where it was now, but it was, um, you know, they do all these wonderful science projects and stuff, but uh, what was it? I want to say they were doing some generational work and this was, I've heard of the versions in people, but I have one that comes to mind with monkeys. And so they were doing it with monkeys and bananas. And it was like, um, they, they, I think, started this one version of a group of monkeys to deter them from eating a banana. And so they did this and the monkey was like, eh, okay. But then when the baby came up, you know, they kind of went into it and would reach for the banana, but, you know, would be deterred from it. And even from the, the older, the mom or whatever, you know, no, no, no. Well, within a generation or two, the baby didn't even go for the monkey or, or the monkey didn't even go for the banana. Didn't even. It was like out of the realm of possibility. So not even out of curiosity did it go there. It had come through that generational process that that was something that was just not good. Don't do that. So that's a pretty dang good example of how generational things can come down the line, I think. Yeah. And I know I've had people that I've worked with who, when I do take them back into a certain process or I, or I do go into that lineage and it's like, well, let's, let's see where that's at. You know, is it this far back or is it this far back? And they literally can tell me Oh, it's right there. It's my great grandfather or my great grandmother. Or no, it's way back. You know, I'm, I'm. It feels like it's way back on the line. And we go back and we clear that all the way up. Mm. And it's amazing how they feel when they come out of it. It's like I don't know what just happened, but oh my goodness, you know that I just felt something kind of lighten up and and move forward. So yes, I think that there's absolutely that possibility there. That's amazing. That's that's a perfect explanation. And also, I love the way you shared how people can actually go back through the processes that you give them. I think more and more because we are so connected with the Internet, we're hearing all these stories, you know, of kids being born and remembering their past lives and remembering all these different things. And I think it's become more less woo woo and more, hey, there's epigenetics. There's all this truth around things getting a uh, science experience like the monkeys, the mice. I know a lot of different experiments around the mice. And even though they're not human beings, we can absolutely truly apply that to how epigenetics works and how we can prove that we ourselves also carry these cellular memories. Now, one of the things that you focus on with helping people go through this, you talked about NLP, but I also want to talk about hypnotherapy because a lot of people, from what I've heard and when I'm interviewed, either they're scared of hypnotherapy because they're afraid that they're going to go into this coma and then the person's going to find out all of their deepest, darkest secrets, or they just don't think it works on them. There's some really active-minded people that feel that they cannot get into that state can you talk a little bit about what hypnotherapy is how it addresses the subconscious mind and how it would help someone really get to these root causes of why the physical elements yes i want to make a quick remark because there are actual studies on that ancestral line with people they've done studies with like um, people who were gone through trauma and then having children and how those children yeah. react and things like that. They are, I can't, I just can't find them in my brain at the moment, but they're like, they're yeah, you're right. It, it, it's the, um, the hunger. It was in, I believe Sweden. I, I think it was in that country where there was a, fa a famine and they realized that generations down, even four generations down, the people were struggling with food um, issues and even in the uh, Holocaust situation. Dr. Gabor Mate always talks about this, where the babies, the Holocaust babies, actually have higher susceptible depression, addiction, all because of what was happening. Um, even if they never met their grandparents, even if they never were involved with them. So yes, thank you for clarifying that, because it's not just 
epigenetics is proven through human beings. <laughs> I guess I'll go yes, right. yes. <laughs> and to answer your question around, yes, most of the time it's so funny because people will go, I don't want to cluck like a chicken or dance around, you know, like the people, because they're familiar with stage hypnosis. One thing I want you to think about with that stage hy hypnosis, though, and I always remind people, the people up on stage agreed to do whatever they were open to it they knew it was probably going to be fun they knew there might be chicken dancing because they were aware and so they they gave their permission to be a part of that and that's something i really want you to be aware of there's permission involved in that and the people that i work with i work with oftentimes content free so you don't have to tell me your deepest darkest secrets you don't have to tell me over and over again about what you've been through, why you think it's happened. We go through kind of an opening thing of what your symptoms are. And you'd probably be surprised. I go through the checklist. Somebody comes to me for one thing and I go through a checklist and they end up with 15 of them going, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's an issue. I didn't think about that. So we go through and we write out things, but I don't need to know the deepest, darkest secrets. I don't want to know. I got my own issues. I don't need to. <laughs> going with with your stuff um and that's you're actually the work that i do personally you're often not talking there's no talking in the process a lot of people do do the work where there's talking and an exchange and in certain instances there's responses um a lot of the work i do there's not with some of the nlp strictly nlp and not hypnosis there's conversation of yes no you know, give me a color, give me a shape, something like that. But in the hypnosis process, I actually work at such a deep level that I want you relaxed and comfortable and open. And the one thing there is you are always in control, always. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to do it wrong. You know, a lot of people are afraid. Well, I, I was oh, my gosh, you know, my brain goes everywhere. It's on 15 different thoughts at once. And so often we have like the initial session and it's like, here's how it's going to flow. Here's it's, And it's kind of a negativity clearing session that's super comfortable and easy so that people know the process the next time they're able to go, oh, okay, all I have to do is listen. But you can be very aware through the whole process. You can be in and out, kind of knowing what's there. You can just be listening to the tone of my voice or you can go flat out any of those are okay they're absolutely okay i find myself sometimes still and i've done hypnosis for a long time and been a hypnotic subject for a long time when i'm doing something sometimes my brain will go oh did i deal with the laundry you know <laughs> like oh come back just come back and listen a little bit just listen to the tone listen to whatever so it's okay and and I often tell people too, because they're like, well, what if I wake up and I'm lost and I don't know what to do? If you wake up and you don't know what's going on, listen to the tone and rhythm of my of my voice. That's all you need to be aware of. And it's okay. And so once we kind of have that conversation that you're not going to do it wrong, it goes okay for most people. They They relax, especially after the first session. I even have people come back now and go, can we, I don't even know what I want to work on, but can we just do it? Cause I love the feeling of the session. You know, I like to be in the energy of it. And, and people often ask too, well, can't you just send me a recording? I do send recordings. However, I think there's an energetic exchange as well in the live process of things. And I think that it really does allow me to fine tune things for the people that I work with. And because I believe in that energetic connection as well. And so when we're in that live aspect and we have a conversation, hey, what's going on for you this week? I can tweak the things to adjust a little bit with a word here, a word there to really work with what you've got going on in the moment. So it's not just going to be a generic recording that says, oh, here, I absolutely back up my work with recordings for you. If you're having a moment, here's one that's going to help you. Here's one to kind of just keep in the background for a while, while we're working together. Because there's some things that are everybody kind of needs. We need uh, serotonin, melatonin adjustments pretty much. And so have a recording that does that uh i think that one's actually out there somewhere free right now but you can listen to that and it's going to help with adjusting the serotonin and melatonin so that things can come into alignment in your body if those things are out of alignment 
Most things are going to be uncomfortable. Your digestion is not going to work great. Your sleep is not going to work great. Your moods are not doing well. So when you can bring those into play and, and line them up a little bit better, you're going to be rocking it right from there. Yeah, it's a, it's a chemical process. It's a spiritual process. It's And having someone there is like holding space for you too so that you do feel safe and you do feel... I was I was more on the opposite where I felt that it wouldn't work for me because I felt like my mind was too busy and I had a hypnotherapy session and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. I got into a level of of this relaxation that I don't think I've even accessed through uh, meditation, which I'm an everyday meditator. The other thing I want to say, Laura, your voice is very, very beautiful. It's very, I love the frequency of it. I feel like it almost, like it, this was your life path <laughs> to be able to guide people through that. <laughs> which I want to ask you about, like, how did you get into this work? Like, is this something that you like stumbled upon? Were you your own student first? Or why did you pick this route? Because I want to ask you also about astrology in a few moments too. Well, I, I, so I am a professional intuitive and astrologer as well. And I was doing that work for a long time. I've been doing that work for intuition work, probably for 20 something years as you know, for other people. And uh, I added in the astrology some time ago. And then I just, this is so funny, you're going to laugh at this a little bit, people laugh at me. But I had this moment for whatever reason of thinking, even though those are super useful, and very <laughs> practical, I'm like, I need something for the for the non woo people, I need something that's very, you know, practical. And so I went to hypnosis, that was my very practical <laughs> thing. <laughs> and I don't know, I just started seeing it around and and it started showing up in different ways as things do, you know, and and so I started paying more and more attention. And then I I reached out and kind of looked at a couple different things and and then this one person that that uh, I was involved with a group that I followed popped up and was a trainer and was getting ready to do some stuff online uh, for the first time and I thought, "Oh, I like him. And he did some introductory stuff that said, here's what it's about. And I'm like, okay, tell me about that. And so I did the introductory stuff. And as soon as I did that, it was like, yep, yes, this is what I need to do. I need to go in and do this. And part of it is that I'm from a military family and uh, it's generational. And, and I know that there's a lot of people in frontline services, military, things like that. Although I found out in my dive through that, that it's not just them, but they're, they were kind of the, and, and sometimes still are the poster people for trauma, PTSD, CPTSD, because they have a high rate of it. There's a lot behind that, but, and I thought, wow. And I love the content free part where, because sometimes they can't talk about the issues, the things that have caused them issues. Um, they just can't. They're not allowed to have those conversations. And I thought this is a wonderful way to be able to help someone and do that. And so that was one of my driving points in going into hypnosis. And then I found um, a specific trainer who I almost didn't go to because it was uh, it's so hilarious. But uh, I'm a sad sorry to admit that her price for her program was so low that I went eh really not any good <laughs> and I was like well, Laura what are you doing and it was recommended and then I thought well she did the first one for free and I'm going all right I'm just gonna go listen it's free what's it gonna no problem oh my goodness it was like that last little piece that slipped into place and it was so much information and gave me so much background and it's so interesting when I look at that now and when I look at the labels that people have and that are given and and they're told so often you're so broken or i can only help you this much or uh you just have to learn to deal with it and that's not true you are never too broken first of all you don't have to live with it and there is hope and help always and so that was a huge, huge thing for me to come into. And when I talk to people now and they're like, well, I wouldn't say I have PTSD and I just kind of grew up normal. So, but I have this anxiety issue. And what's interesting, normal for people, 
when you start talking to them, they're like, well, yeah, you know, my dad was arrested and put in jail for beating somebody up. And, you know, we, we kind of didn't survive well, we didn't have a lot of food or anything. And this happened and that happened, or yeah, I was part of a gang or, 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 or that's a normality. If it's your life, I have a lot of stuff in my life. If I told you it, because it was just my life, it was normal. You'd be like, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> and but that's just how it was you know and and it's so funny I was talking to a gentleman and he had a conversation with someone he had been through a lot of trauma in his life and been beaten up really badly and he was talking to someone and the and the other person said you know I never really had violence I'm sorry that you dealt with that and then he came and he go, guy goes great that's great but he came back and he goes well well I I did get punched in the face that one time yeah, that's kind of violent just so you know that's, that's, and and so we don't realize that there could be something like i said that wouldn't even be marked necessarily as a trauma but for a little tiny person or a baby i've had people go back in utero and there was something that happened that they were aware of and it anchored in that little moment of something for them they needed to clear later and so it's it's not about the um, label or the issue. It's about how you're feeling, how you're living. What are you dealing with that you don't want to deal with anymore? That's what it's about. And so that is the path that I kind of came in to do this stuff with. And I found that the work that I do now is so amazing. And it, and it often combines because sometimes I do dip into working if I'm working with someone and it comes into a conversation about how they're managing something, how they're doing. A lot of times we'll do an astrological chart for that person because it will really show them along with me, how they interact in the world. What are some of the things that are maybe uh, energies that they had shut down? Oftentimes people will be told from their time, they're a kid, uh, you're too much. You need to quiet down. You need to calm down. You need to be less. But in actuality, they have a lot of fire in their chart. They need to be more, to be that, that version. They need to let that flow because when they let their fire flow, so many of it lights up the world for everyone else and it gives everyone else an opportunity to connect to their energy and boom, you know, it's like lighting your torch off of them and then your fire can grow and you can see the way. And so... I help them with that. And when sometimes just coming into the awareness, which is what a lot of hypnosis, a lot of the astrological work I do, a lot of the intuitive work I do, coming into the awareness of something changes everything, everything. It's, you know, people call them those aha moments and you go, how did I not know that? You didn't know because you didn't know, but now that you do, it changes everything. It makes it easier. I mean, I often talk to people and, and it's, you know, life is, it's like climbing a mountain. Oh my goodness. I could do all these things and I'm trying and I'm, I'm doing all of this. I'm putting so much into it. And I know that I can get over to the other side where I want to be. And the work that I do is like, there's a tunnel underneath. Let me show you the way. Let's open the door and go under right over to the other side. So you don't have to go through all that crap. Wow, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful way to put it. And I think it helps people that are both on the logical mind side, but also those that are heart centered to really understand that this is really like the bridge that brings it all together. So you can ultimately understand yourself and know yourself to to learn to accept yourself. And along those lines, I'd love for you to touch a little bit more on intuitive astrology, because I'm a student of astrology, and I absolutely see it as the oldest science that was ever created for humanity. And I see it as a tool for self-realization. And again, to me, the healing journey is really about awareness and acceptance of your entire self, your totality. It's not about fixing anything. It's not, it's revealing who you truly are. So can you tell us a little bit about how, how, I mean, I love that you pull the charts and you get to know the person better and then combine that with hypnosis. Can you touch more on that? Like how does astrology, how has it served you? How does it uh, serve 
those that perhaps have never seen it as a as a pathway to self-discovery? Well, it's interesting because most people will go, here's my sun sign here, or here's my sun moon rising, you know, here's this. Well, astrology is kind of like baking a cake. And so if you say, here's my sun sign, I'm a Gemini. It's like, that's nice. Now we have flour, (laughs) but we have to add in all the rest of the ingredients to make that cake. And that cake is who you are. And it's got all the different flavors and it might have more of one particular version of those flavors, you know, a lot of fire or a lot of water or a lot of things. But basically astrology is our, our guide to living in our world. We're meant to bring in all four of, of those things, the, the elements every day in our life. We come into the world with a certain balance of them. So some things are really easy for us. Some things might be a little more challenging, but and we're given gifts in those. It's like you, know, you might have a gift in water, or a gift in, in fire, something like that. Uh, or you might have a challenge there. Any of those are information for us information here's the energy and you can lean into this and it's really going to work well with you or you're going to maybe go away from it and you're going to be fighting and uncomfortable constantly and so that's it's so funny i had a friend and uh, i did her chart and she goes she's she was dating a twin and she said they're twins but i said they're so different right <laughs> she's I said, but I'll bet you some of the differences are in a similar area, like work or, you know, and, and one leans in this way and maybe one goes this way. And she goes, that's exactly right. I said, this is because one person's leaning in and using the energy that they have in the very best way possible. And the other person is kind of fighting against it and going, I, I think there's another way, or I, I don't know that I want to accept that. You know, and so when you're fighting against it, it becomes harder. So you might have, you know, a Capricorn in their work environment. Maybe it's in their in their uh, in a particular house or something like that that says, "Here it is." You've got one person who's leaning into that energy, leadership, getting it done, showing the way, making you know the the groundwork long term, and then you've got this other person who's lazy and doesn't want to do the work and all of that. This one is way more uncomfortable with life. And they're not getting where they want to be. This person is making strides. Do they struggle sometimes? Maybe because of other things in their chart? Yes, absolutely. But when I talk with someone, that's the thing I want to show them. I don't want to say your um, Saturn is in Gemini in the fifth house and it's, you know, trying this and adjacent that. I don't want to do that. I want to say, you know what, in your life lessons, in your life purposes, this is how it's really showing up for you throughout your lifetime. And I can tell you right now that somewhere around this year, which would be between your, around your 29th year, 20, 28 to, to 30, there was a big change in your life, big change. There would have been something, your life fell apart. Or maybe something wonderful happened, you took a whole new direction, you got married, you had a baby, something. But you will notice at that year that there was a big change in your life. And I've never had anyone go, oh, no. They might go, I can't think of it in the moment. But they'll come back in a little bit and go, oh, that was the year. You know, it was this year, just before, just after. And it's like, yeah, that's your Saturn return. Because Saturn has such a huge influence in our life. It comes in and checks in on us and goes, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you doing what you agreed to? And so I help them look at it and go, here's the energies that are going to help you boost that and go in the direction that you want. Your heart is like this, you know, it's, it's fiery and you, you might say the thing before you think, and you might do this and that's fine, but you have to learn that you do have to come back around and kind of discuss that with the person, or maybe you can direct it this way so that it doesn't come out in such a harsh tone. Or I help them work with it in a way that, that goes, you know, you've got the backup to do this. And when I show people that they're like, Oh, I always thought that was kind of an issue in my life or a problem. And and it's like, well, if you're not seeing it the way that it's meant to be seen, then yeah, but you can make everything work together in your life for the best part of your journey. Are you going to have difficulties? Always. Are you going to have challenges? Absolutely. But all of the work that I do, all of it, 
astrology, intuition, hypnosis, all of it is meant for you to find the place that says, oh my goodness, I'm upset, I'm here, I'm whatever, and then come into the place of, but I'm okay. I am okay. And I can deal with this. And how am I going to deal with this? And you start finding the ways to do that. Instead of being in this little pit of, I'm this is horrible. I'm feeling anxious every day. I don't know how to deal with it. And staying in that loop, in that difficult place. And then beating yourself up because you're so emotional. Or beating yourself up because you didn't deal with it the way that you thought you should. When you can see that, first of all, Maybe you've got a lot of water in your chart. You're going to be very emotional. Here's how to help you manage that. And I do that. And let's go in and see what that big root of anxiety is about. Clear that root and see if some of the other things kind of go away naturally with it. And when we can do that in hypnosis and you come to that part, and all of a sudden you go, oh, I'm out in a crowd. Mm -hmm. And then you go, oh, oh, actually I'm okay. I'm kind of okay. Wow, that's different. Now I'm learning to navigate this world in a whole different way. Or, you know, you're with IBS, you don't have to know within 10 feet where every bathroom is. What a gift that is. What a gift to be able to go, oh, I was out for all day and I didn't even have to think about it. What a gift. Yeah, that is so, so powerful because I think a lot of people with astrology like you said if you if you read it and 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 have a negative perception about you know this particular transit in your chart then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and then you become like victim to your chart which really it's a tool to help you understand how like you said you need someone like you to help you direct that energy how to work with it now by the same token i want to ask you is there a particular place in the chart where it would become obvious to you that this individual was carrying a lot of or a particular generational traumatic pattern is that something that you can do through a chart or do you have to dig deeper and kind of like look at the whole recipe of this I think that some people would say absolutely yes and they could go do that for me it's more intuitive I'm going to look at something and go Oh, I'll bet there were probably in your in your childhood if I'm looking at a particular placement of something so yes, I'm going to say yes, you can. Some of that is intuitively to know how or where it showed up for them, where I might, you know, have that intuitive flash of, oh my gosh, this person was the adult from five years old, you know, and, and they always had to be the caretaker in the family. They always had to be the person that will have a placement most likely in your chart with some different things going on that will tell me how that's influenced you, what's happened. Let's talk about that a little bit and how that shows up for you now. <clears throat> and do you still really dive into that into in a healthy energy where you want to be the caretaker and yes, you want to help? Or do you do it to the point that it's not healthy for you? Mm -hmm. Because that was how it, you were expected to be from the time you were tiny. Let's talk about that. And so we see how it shows up for the person a little bit. And uh, and then, yeah, we can go from there and, and make the changes. But I think it's always super fascinating with, with people. Because one thing you said, and I really want to touch on that, is some people do think, ooh, a certain placement or a certain sign or a certain thing is, ooh, you know, oh, my goodness, Scorpio. Scorpio gets a bad rap all the time. Oh, they're so intense. They're so dark. They're so everything. Scorpios are so crazy amazing. And it, I learned this through the process of learning about astrology and through watching the people that I work with. Uh, my son actually has five planets in Scorpio. But, <laughs> so, but there's an intensity with a Scorpio that we don't understand. Part of that is, if you've ever seen the um, the, the pictures that are uh, of underwater and above water, uh -huh. and they're both crystal clear, you can see them really well. Oh my goodness, that is the water signs, especially Scorpio. They go deep down and they see the beauty in the under part of our life, of, of life itself, death, um, sex life in general they they will see all of the interesting intricate parts of it and go 
look at this. They don't want to talk about how was your day. They want to talk about, oh my gosh, can you imagine what it would be like to experience this? You know, and they're fascinated by that. And the rest of us are kind of like, oh my goodness, we're up. Instead of seeing the beauty of all that's under there, we're sitting up on the top in the boat, looking down going, it's kind of murky. I don't know. <laughs> it's a bit yeah. scary down there. And so the Scorpios can be a little scary. And you know how the, the divers have to kind of pace themselves going down. Scorpio doesn't have to do that. The rest of us do. But it's, sometimes the Scorpio will try to pull you down yeah. really fast. And you're like, this is so much. This is too much. So the Scorpio, when I talk with them, I tell them, when you have people in your life, take them down a little bit at a time. To the it's not that deep depth. Another thing with them, they it's like um, if you've ever been in the waves on a beach, and you're in the waves and, and you get beaten up by them and tumbled and you roll around, you learn to navigate them. You dive under them or you ride them in or you kind of swim out where you can kind of be in just behind them in the swell of things. But you're always having to navigate them. That's a Scorpio emotionally. They are constantly in those ways. So if you look at them and think they're intense, they're kind of navigating this whole emotional realm, trying to be normal, trying to have, you know, the the, the connection. And and the rest of us are over on the lazy river doodling long might have a little rapid now and then going, what's the issue? This is kind of fun. What's all the emotion about? That's what all the emotion is about. They're living that. That's what's going on for them. And for and and they're trying to act normal in our world like they're supposed to and not have all these big emotions, but try to feed for themselves as well the natural desires and interests that they have. So they might want to, they're great detectives. They will dig deep into conversations with you. Let them, you know, let them go as far as you're comfortable with, but understand that that's what's happening for them and when you can see that person through that lens through those ideas you will have a whole different respect for scorpio that's so so powerful yeah you you definitely can use it but again you don't want it to become something that now you're identifying with this transit and now you're stuck and you're never going to get out of this place so thank you for really explaining that we could probably talk about astrology the rest of the podcast it's so fascinating but we are running out of time. And I one thing that I want to ask you before we end is if somebody wants to work with you, how do your sessions look? Do they reach out to you? Do you do group setting, single setting? Like, what would that look like? I do do some group work. I do a lot of um, individual work. And uh, my I don't tend to do single sessions unless, you, unless you've worked with me previously because I have you go through um, what I call my initial kind of protocol. It's uh, Highlands Hypnosis Protocol is what I call it. And it's six to seven sessions. And it really does kind of do that reset for you. And I do that in... I do six to seven sessions, or I'm actually putting into play right now um, a version of the same thing that goes into two days, two half day sessions or one long day, which is which is a good eight hour. You have to be committed to that. It's an eight, nine hour day of, uh, of doing the work. But for some people, that's what they want. And so I'm trying to put it out there in the way that they want it. Uh, but that work is so amazing. I do the single sessions, of course, with astrology and intuition and things like that. And all of that's on my website. And it's under my name, Laura Ordeal, L-A-U-R-A-O-R-D-I-L-E. It looks like Ordeal. And so they can find me there. I'm under my name on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, most of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm out there and uh and so and i do actually do my own podcast called the change gang and there's a, a facebook group on facebook called the change gang you're welcome to come join that that's free no charge there so go around and have a look and there are a lot of free things under for astrology for uh some of the hypnosis work i do i think there's a subliminal maybe on my website there's like four different things that you can get for free on my website so just go to the freebies tab on my website and you'll find those Oh, wonderful. And and you do do virtual, right? It's not an, always. In oh, yeah. Actually, all my work is virtual. Someone asked me to do it in person the other day. And I was like, <laughs> maybe. <That's fine." laughs> I love that. I love that because now you can reach out a bigger audience and they can totally find you. Beautiful, Laura. It's been so amazing. I, the last question I have for you is what is your 
last words as it relate to the healing journey for someone who's just starting? What would you tell them if they're just beginning on this journey? I would tell them to follow their awareness, to mm -hmm. step into the things that are being shown to them, because we are always being shown, just like I was with the hypnosis, where it kept popping up, it kept showing up. When you are truly wanting the change, you will have things. Maybe you're hearing this podcast. That's an awareness for you right there, a connection for you. So follow the awareness because the more you do, the more that becomes possible for you to be able to do in your life, to be able to change in your life, to be able to uh, experience in your life in a wonderful way. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you, Laura, so, so much for being a guest on this, on the podcast today. It's been amazing. We'll make sure that we link all of your social media uh, connections, as well as your website here below in the podcast description. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, thank you to everyone for joining us on the Sovereign, Moon, Sovereign Sisterhood Movement podcast together. We're breaking generational cycles and we're creating a legacy of healing for seven generations before and after. And I remember your healing journey is a gift to you, your children, your parents, your ancestors, your future generations. Until next time, take care. Bye, Laura. Thank you for being Bye. here. Thank you.